whole scene. <laughs> You don't expect to see a car like that doing that. No. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can sit and watch these now, and they're over 100 years old. Hello, and welcome to another episode of UK Stuntmen React, the show where we look at the biggest stunts from TV and film with the people that perform them. Got a really great guest today, Matt Sterling. Welcome, Matt. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt, tell us a little bit about your career in stunts. I've been doing stunts now for 22 years. I trained as an actor, trained as a dancer. Yeah, look at this. Um, <laughs> and my first film, Blade 2. Okay, I nice. Rightly. So it was a few years ago now. Oh, we love that film. Yeah. I enjoyed working on Rogue One. I loved working on Rogue One, just the fact of running around with a blaster, you know, shooting stormtroopers and that sort of stuff. And I worked on five of the Harry Potters. I still enjoy working on TV and I'm very lucky in the fact of working on both. Yeah, I love it. I love Good. it. And, and you're creating lots of, lots of fun things and a bit of entertainment for people. Let's check out our first clip. Fast and Furious 6. Matt, what did you have to do with this one? Originally, I was put into double for Vin Diesel. I got to meet the director. They said, look, there's a part going because they wanted to create the illusion. When the camera comes in, the whole audience goes, ah, oh, you know, there's Vin Diesel. Yeah. And then it comes around and they go, who's that? So, <laughs> and all I can remember was the director saying to me, you're going to get the cat kicked out of you. <laughs> and I went, right, okay. I ain't telling you shit. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> They wanted to break as many tiles as they could. Yeah. So they did a hand pull into that. And you know, like you tile and you would normally put the grout on and then stick the tile on the wall. What they would do was do big dollops of the grout so that it was resting out from the wall about that much. So when I hit it, it cracked it and broke it and shattered it. So it made it look more of an impact. Great... When I went over the top, I was on a kind of gooch wrap over this oh. to go through the table. We only had two or three tables to go through, but he was great. He was absolutely fantastic to work with. Because of his wrestling background, he knows exactly you, how to do you it, yeah. kind of go, he's, he makes it look as though he's really grabbing you and you think, he's actually grabbing me. When we went up to the ceiling, I said, I'm gonna pull the ceiling down. And they went, no, 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 you won't, you won't. and the whole ceiling came down. <laughs> the whole lot came down. And Dwayne was great because as it came down, it was like this ceiling, it's like that low slung stuff. Yeah. It went all dusty and he kind of stood over me and stopped it from going in my eyes. And I thought, there's not many actors that would- I consider that, consider your, yeah. Do you know, my safety. And then when the paramedic came in, he said, is everyone all right? You know, because some people needed their eyes getting cleaned out. Dwayne was like, yeah, get Matt out first. And I thought, what a top guy. And this one was just literally two picks, one on either side. <laughs> And I hit the window. I think I did the window about four times. So you actually hit them with it, they didn't put you on a, on a stop? No, I hit the window. Oh, really? Right. Oh, I hit the window. It was Dwayne's emphasis to go, whoop, you know, and let, let me go. He was watching the monitor, and I just hit the window, and I was laying on the floor, and I kind of went past the window like that, and went, help, let me out. And he, and he was laughing, and I just thought, <laughs> he was just, no, he was just nice. And the costume department, they did a great job. They made neoprene sleeves I was, for me. I was going to ask you about your your elbows and stuff right yeah so i had neoprene sleeves that's why i had a big wristband to make it look like a watch so it blended into my hands it was really yeah, good but really it did good. protecting my elbows a lot a lot more and with your years of experience and like training you basically got to use all your different types of like hits and falls here in that one sequence <laughs> where you're yeah. thinking like i thought it was just going to be a couple of hits but when i read the script <laughs> i thought oh my god this is really going to hurt <laughs> You know, I was placed in that position. I was out at that point. No, I wasn't. I was <laughs> just dragged you into it. <laughs> just put him in that position. Start filming like, oh my God. Now we're looking at a Buster Keaton film from 1924, Sherlock Jr. Matt, you went to have a look at sort of some, some Buster Keaton stuff. Why is that? I absolutely love Buster Keaton. I think that these guys were the, I mean, they were the pioneers of stunts, really. Do you know who named Buster Keaton Buster? Harry Houdini. Ah. The story is that Buster Keaton <laughs> fell down some stairs as a child and got up, didn't have any bruises on him, and, and Houdini said, God, that's a Buster. And his father said, that's it, that's what we're going to call him. They <laughs> called him Buster Keaton. I mean, this bike sequence is just amazing because well, that's, like, that's this... him. Pioneered all these gags and all these things. People nowadays are, are recreating and they're thinking, oh, I've just something, done something new. No, he's already done it. He already it. did it, yeah, yeah. He already did it. Oh, you can see it's been sped, sped up. up. Yeah, of, of course. course, yeah. But he's still essentially riding a bike, sitting on the front of it, it through, through streets for cars. It's I mean, the, you know, the, the pratfall, it's been used, I mean, at home alone. You look at those falls those guys did in that. 
it's is, that, just, is, that, is that exaggerated that like leg thrown out kind well, of thing? Yeah. It's like the, it's the slip on the banana. F yes. Field, is it? Up yeah. and then down hard, you know. But it's telling the story as well. I mean, even to the fact of these guys having a, you know, a tug of war when he goes to the middle of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's nearly 100 years old. This is pretty insane as well. I mean, again, I can't work out if it's an optical illusion. Yeah, I would probably say that's that's an optical illusion. What, what, what are you thinking? What, uh, how, I don't know how they would... Uh, I would say they've done that as a kind of a plate shot. Right, okay. They're just <laughs> randomly going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not only kind of like stunt techniques here that have been used through ages. There's there's a uh, visual filmmaking techniques. Oh yeah, comedy, I mean you know comedy techniques. There's... Split cuts and 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 but they're creating it. Um, no pre-existing work basically to base no, off. No, yeah. you haven't got you know drawings of right. This is what I'm going to do next. This is what I'm going to do next. Like we have now, and we'll only do two or three shots. I think it was 1903 was the first credit for a stunt double used. Right, okay. And it was in the Great Train Robbery. Look, these guys are getting dragged down the road, right? There's no pads there, right? They're not wearing the latest G-form pads and all that sort of stuff. Almost every shot is just a big wide shot. There's no cuts to hide it. No. There's no visual effects to hide it. What is happening on the screen is what's happening on the screen. And you've got to remember, Buster Keaton made over 200 films. Wow. Well, I think it's good for our audience to see this kind of stuff because it shows you where these, you know, these, this kind of this stuff is it. From. This is it. This is kind of where it's come from. The Eastern Europe, they're angry people. And they say black people are angry too. It's nuts. We're not angry compared to them. Next up, we're looking at a UK police series called Bulletproof. So in this one, I have another opportunity to play a part again. I always remember going into the casting and Mick went, oh, you're exactly what I'm looking for, blah, 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 blah. And he said, do you speak Serbian? <laughs> I went, no, I don't, stop. <laughs> I don't speak Serbian, I'm from Uxbridge. <laughs> so I had to learn Serbian. Znate sve uzmi to kluchive, ako bas chope, bacice, samo rendrova, poše, emečka extra. That was one line, look at that. Just one line. <laughs> Still in my memory now. And then they said, right, we've got this lovely driving sequence to do. So I had the opportunity to play the part and do my own driving sequence. Perfect. And I thought I was going to get, you know, like a Lambo or something like that. No, and I got an Audi Estate, <laughs> which is a bit of a bummer. You know, at the start of this, there's a bit where you, you hit the woman to run all over. That was a dummy. A dummy. That's all dummies, is it? Because okay, that, was... that looks absolutely brutal. So we hit the dummy. <laughs> As we hit the dummy, the boys then take off and start chasing us. So the dummy's in the road. Andy Godbold was driving the big truck that's got all the cars on it. Because he had nowhere to go, he ran over her. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, I'm really sorry, I've run over the, I've run over the prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> The other drivers that are people that you're weaving in and out of, are they all stunt drivers? We would set out and we'd do it with model cars on a, on a piece of paper and we'd say, right, you are the blue car, you're the red car, you're the green car. And we'd set everybody in motion. So everybody knew the gap that they were gonna maintain and how fast we were gonna do. And I'd enter the tunnel, I'd find my point and I'd go, right, there's Steph, she's in the blue car. Now I'm gonna go left. I'm now gonna go with the traffic for two cars. Now I'm gonna go back and face the traffic. Now I'm gonna go back in with the traffic. It becomes like a dance routine almost. Kind of yeah, thing. the whole thing was we knew exactly where we were and I knew that there was a taxi. And as soon as that taxi passed, I knew I could go. Mother, you're deaf. Like, I don't even know what you're playing. <laughs> We had to do this sequence of getting away. We did something that I'd never seen before. What they wanted me to do originally was to do 180, a 360, and come back round on myself. So that's gonna be a yeah. 540. So I'm gonna come back and be 540 facing them. To be able to spin the car that aggressively, I was doing 70 mile an hour, because right. it's a big car. And they said, we're not gonna be able to get you to do the speed that you're wanting to do. So I said, right, how are we gonna do it? We stuck a slick tire on the rear yep. driver's side, because that's the that was the, the purchase point for me when I did the handbrake turn. But I had 22 feet width. I steered into the handbrake, popped the handbrake, so then the car started to started to go into a handbrake turn. And as it got to its point of no return, which was just kind of past the 90, I let off with the handbrake and counter steered the, the vehicle. It was a really good sequence to have and we had some we had some fun with the cars. I think I broke one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect to see a car like that doing that no. kind of like another like it. <laughs> They give you a bit of a kick in here once they've. Uh, yeah, he just caught. He just caught my chin as well on this. Oh, Boom! Just oh. clipped. Just clipped my chin. He looks like it. Yeah, he looks like. Just, just clipped my chin. I was like, oh, that was close. <laughs> that was close. Okay, so we're looking at another classic black and white film here with Harold Lloyd. 
This is a very iconic stunt with the clock from Safety Last. It, it looks very like high. He, he's on an extremely high. Yeah, position. so they cheated it. So he found a building that looked down this road, this iconic road. <laughs> yeah. And actually he's only uh, about sort of eight, nine feet high because they filmed it in perspective of the building and cheated it. So, so basically if they, if they tilt the camera down, yeah, you'll see that there's a... There's a mat they had a mattress there and everything. So they did cheat. They did cheat it, obviously, you know, to make it look as though he was seven stories up. Not but yet. to have that strength to do that balance and have the timing and and the story of the rope and you know don't, don't, <laughs> don't grab the don't grab the rope don't grab the rope for a, for an you know a performer an actor of his time to do all their own things it was yeah. it was I mean look at that twenty fourth of August nineteen nineteen Harold Lloyd was performing for a publicity stunt. He was gonna have a photographic shoot. They had a props box and he picked up some props and said it might be quite good to have some pictures with the props. And he picked up a bomb, what he thought was a fake bomb. And he lit it with a cigarette and he went, there's too much smoke. And as he went to put it down, it went off and it blew his right hand up. He lost his thumb and his first finger. <laughs> that was in 1919. This is 1923. Right. Now his uncle used to make leather gloves. So Harold Lloyd said, right, make a glove for me that imitates a thumb and a first finger. And if you watch any of the shots now, everything was shot so it favoured his left hand side. But you can actually see they made a glove that was flesh coloured for him. Right, okay. That he could still carry on filming. Oh wow. And then when you look closely, at uh, little bits that he does, you can see that his thumb isn't gripping. So he did all this and all the physical stuff he's doing, considering that's pretty, pretty... And he was in the pinnacle of his career. They had this skill to be able to do the pratfalls. That's not the skill. It's the, the skill to make it look as though it's an accident. Accidental, yeah, yeah. Those guys were the gods, really. Mm. You know, and we, we kind of forget about them. Uh, I've been performing magic and hypnosis for many years now. Oh, yeah. So here we have something a little bit different for the shows. As Matt mentioned, he's also a talented magician. We have a big live TV show called Britain's Got Talent. Matt used his magician and stunt skills to create a big live show and got into the semi-finals. Now I've got here a deck of cards. Each card has been printed with the name of a different film, as you can see. So they've contacted me and said, would you be interested? I said, look, I've got this idea. It's a bit of a madcap idea, <laughs> but I want to combine the stunts and the magic. I don't want the judges to know that I'm a stuntman. If I go out and it says Matt Sterling stuntman, or they've got the information, straight away they're going to be going, Where's the stunt? Yeah, something's yeah. going to happen here. So I had all the boys standing by. Uh, we rehearsed it the, about a week before for about eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of what I came up with, with the fact of them picking the cards. Don't say anything, just really think about the film title. So Matt was going to be the man on fire. This is the one thing I wanted for Amanda. When she had her eyes closed, I didn't want her to know what had happened. Yeah. So straight away she goes, well, what happened? What happened? <laughs> because I didn't want Matt to walk across screaming or shouting. Yeah. And when they put him out, I didn't want fire extinguishers. So right. we rehearsed with basically a whopping great big blanket. Right. We wrapped him in the blanket and laid him down. So it was all quiet. It shocked, it actually shocked people. Yeah. Well, I just love the way Matt is so casual about it as well. He's just proper strolling across the, <laughs> yeah, on fire now, so what? You to be grumpy old men! <laughs> Tony doing his heckling from the box. Hey, jump up in the house! Why? Sleep! <laughs> Tony did a wonderful, wonderful Great high one. fall. <laughs> yeah. We took out two rows of the palladium and we built a, built a box rig in there. Two lazer boxes with some mats because he was going from about 26 feet, something like that. Simon, what was the name of your film? Skyfall. Skyfall. Oh my God. And I had to go back in the next day and go and do a photo shoot. And the security guard came up to me, he said, I want to work with you. And I said, why, what's up? He said, well, right in the middle of your act, that guy started heckling. And we all went on radio and went, there's a heckler, there's a heckler. <laughs> they started running up the stairs to get to Tony. And then Tony fell out of the box. They went, he's fallen out of the box. <laughs> he's fallen out of the box. They went, oh my God, he's part of it. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! You thought of the Matrix? Yes. Yes. Jason Curl did the, the Matrix. Matrix. Yeah. Um, how, how, how did he do that? Was he like his feet kind of locked into the stage or something? I can't tell you that. I'm, I'm sworn to secrecy. <laughs> He's a lot of pressure on Jason. Right. I'll give it to Jason Kerr. He did a very good, He was sweating, thinking, <laughs> I've got to get this right. So I knew when Jason was in the right position because he would be looking at me and he was ready. Magic Mike! 
And then obviously we did this bit. We just wanted a filler at the end. You just wanted to get top. You just wanted to get your <laughs> shirt off, didn't no, you? Really? Well, it was fun. It was a lot of fun to do it. And the guys, they did an amazing job. They were just, nice. they were brilliant. Really, really good. You're only as good as your team. And they were, they were brilliant. Really superb. That's it for this week's show. We want to say a huge thanks to Matt Sterling for coming in. Thank, Thank you very much. It. Thank you. Do I get my cup of tea and biscuit now? Uh, after I've done it. Next week's guest has been in some amazing films like Kingsman, Batman and Mission Impossible. So make sure you tune in. See you later, guys. Bye, bye.